Howdy, welcome to a video on section 1.5, Sentential Connectives and Their Symbols. This is from First Course in Mathematical Logic by Patrick Supps and Shirley Hill. This video will be redundant, to be sure. Nevertheless, it is a good idea to review this section and then go from there. We're dealing with some of the various sentential connectives, such as the and, the or, the not, the if-then. A sentential connective is always something that attaches itself to at least one atomic sentence, and this forms overall a molecular sentence. In the conjunction, we're dealing with an and statement. We symbolize and either with an ampersand or alternatively with a wedge. So we have the molecular sentence formed with two atomic sentences. We have the atomic sentence P, we have the atomic sentence Q, they're combined together through the and sentential connective to get P and Q. P is a case and Q is the case. We have the or, which is a disjunction. The or we symbolize with a descending wedge, it looks like a V. We say P or Q, which means P is the case or Q is the case or both are the case. There's really three possibilities with an or in mathematical logic. P, Q, or both P and Q. We also have the negation, which is a not. We symbolize it this way, or with this tilde. It is not the case that P. And then we have the conditional, the hypothetical, if P, then Q. We symbolize the conditional with an arrow. And for the conditional, we call the P portion the antecedent, the Q portion the consequent. And as we will find out in future videos, in future sections, for a conditional, P is sufficient for Q Q is necessary for P. But right now we can just use our common sense to get a grasp of what these sentential connectives are doing. So it's pretty obvious with the and, the or, the not. The if then is a little bit more confusing, but we at least have a sense what's going on. We're saying that P is sufficient for Q. This is another section that's very straightforward, very easy. I certainly do not want to insult anyone's intelligence. You obviously don't need me to help you through these problems, but let's go through them anyways, and then we will finish this video and move on to the next section. This textbook doesn't take anything for granted. It takes things step by step by step to make the material as easy as possible. So here is exercise six on page 19 of the textbook. It's part E of exercise six. We're to identify each of the following molecular sentences by writing the word that denotes its form. For example, negation, conjunction, disjunction. Sentence one, we have not Q, so we have a negation. Sentence two, we have P and Q. It's definitely an and statement. We have the ampersand as the symbol, so it's a conjunction. Sentence three, not R, is just like sentence one, it's a negation. It has the not symbol. Sentence four, R or S. We have a descending wedge, so it's an or statement. Thus, it is a disjunction. And then we have for sentence five, R and S. It's once again a conjunction. OK, one more problem set. This is part E of exercise seven on page 21. We're to identify the conditional sentences among the sentences below by putting the letter C after each sentence of that form. The symbol for this sentential connective is the arrow. Hence, clearly sentences two and three are conditionals. Note that sentence two tells us if P then not Q. It has two sentential connectives. It has a negation and it has a conditional, but the conditional is dominant. After all, the negation is only affecting Q. Likewise, if we think about sentence one, P or not Q, the negation is just affecting that Q there, so really what's dominant is the disjunction, it's the or. Likewise, for sentence five, we have T and not S, the negation is only affecting S, what's dominant there is the and, so it's a conjunction. Anyway, sentences two and three are conditionals, as you can see. 
Well, that's it for this section, for this video. Up next is section 1.6, Grouping and Parentheses, as we continue to march through the textbook First Course of Mathematical Logic by Patrick Supps and Shirley Hill. I'm the Amateur Logician. Thanks for watching.